Hey everybody, it's me, Zach. And before this episode of 4 Film starts, I just want to say I don't normally talk about any personal things on camera or anything like that, but as of the date of this recording, my grandma Bishop passed away last week, and she was a big fan of 4 Films. So, I just wanted to say thank you to her and to all my family uh, for watching four films. And it was good to know when I first found out that she watched it that she actually enjoyed them. My dad told me, so that, that always made me happy. And I might as well take the time to say thank you to everyone who does watch the show and all my patrons and all the fellow YouTubers that have either directly helped me in a way, or spoken to me, or just the ones that I watch. You know, thanks to all you guys. Like, uh, King Needgore, he's great. He actually promoted one of my videos before, and the channel, and I was very grateful for that, because he's pretty awesome. Uh, thanks, Corey. Uh, the Reviews with Ryan, it's a relatively new channel. Uh, he put one of my videos on his playlist of people you should check out, so give him a watch too. Thank you, uh, Ryan. Uh, Aiden Hickey, who's been a fan of mine on YouTube for a long time. He has his own channel. Uh, you should check him out if you're interested in army men videos and such. And uh, yeah, thanks to all the, the bigger YouTube people that I've watched for years, like Linkara, uh, Bennett the Sage, Maximilian Dude, <laughs> uh, Wooly Versus, you know, William Pat, I've watched you guys since the beginning of The Best Friends, pretty much. Alien Theory, that's a great channel. Comic Tropes is a great channel. I watched both of them when they first started out. Uh, movie Timelines with Josh. All good channels. Yeah, so this is just... This is just me wanting to say thank you to everybody because you don't know how long they're going to be there. Thanks again, and enjoy the episode. By the light of the full moon, you walk through obsidian woods. In the distance, you hear the howl of a beast. So what do you do? Well, you run home to watch four werewolf films that don't bite. As we continue Monster Month, I'm Zach Bishop, and this is Four Films. First up is Dog Soldiers. Dog Soldiers is in the same vein as Aliens, with a team of lovable characters going up against deadly creatures with no form of help around. The practical effects in this film are freaking awesome, and of course you couple that with the very visceral action and you get an outstanding action film, but with all the horror that you need to make it a spooky Halloween event as well. <clears throat> In fact, I remember when this first premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel way back when, and ever since then, this film has stuck with me. I knew I had to own it, so I rushed out to find it on DVD. And luckily I did, and I still have that copy to this day. You may recognize the lead actor, Kevin McKidd, from films such as Danny Boyle's Train Spotting and the Call of Duty video game series. Also in this film is a couple great running gags, and by the end of the movie you actually get a big payoff for one of them. It's a film that I highly recommend if you haven't watched, and you could watch it over and over, especially on a full moon night. <clears throat> Next up is Silver Bullet. A young, crippled Corey Haim and his crazy uncle Red, played by crazy uncle Gary Busey, battle a werewolf. Based on Stephen King's story Cycle of the Werewolf, this film has a lot of dark humor, horror, and heart. I actually think that this is Gary Busey's best role. He has just the right amount of crazy in it. And damn it, it works for me. 
And aside from a nice little story that is actually kind of f***ing terrifying if you think about it for a minute, there's one of the most batshit crazy scenes I've ever seen in any film in this movie. There's a church. Then there's werewolves in the church. One of them's playing the organ. If you haven't checked out this film, again, I highly recommend it because on this list of werewolf films that don't bite, this one doesn't bite the way you think it does. Third up is The Howling. The werewolves in this film, practical and yes, animated, are actually very cool and I think they're what probably inspired the look of the werewolves in Dog Soldiers. So there's your little connection. Based on the 1977 novel, this 1981 film follows the character Karen White, a Karen that you don't hate, who works as an L.A. news anchor who is stalked and attacked by a serial killer. She survives the brutal assault, but has terrible amnesia. How... They sucked his brains out. So to deal with this terrible amnesia, her therapist sends her and her husband to a so-called resort called The Colony. Nothing suspicious about that. Yes, they're all f***ing werewolves. And no, it's not a spoiler, it just makes sense when you think about it for longer than 10 seconds. Little side note, this film features Dick Miller, the actor who played Walter Paisley in the 1959 film A Bucket of Blood. Here he reprises the role of Walter Paisley. You see, in several films, most produced by Roger Corman, he would reprise his role of Walter Paisley. And I personally always thought this was a neat little thing that he'd do. But the big reason people remember the howling is for the ending. At the time, it was very shocking and unexpected, and it's very cool. So again, I recommend this film so you can check it out for yourself. Last up may be the most obvious one. An American Werewolf in London. I almost said Paris. I almost said Paris. It's hard to talk about this film because everyone else has already talked about it. It's a classic film. People love this movie. I love this movie. You should love this movie. Basically, if you don't know, two friends, one of them named David, who is the main character, go walking on the moors when they're told not to walk on the goddamn moors. So what happens? Well, they get attacked by a werewolf. David's friend Jack gets killed by the werewolf, and David becomes a werewolf. Wackiness ensues. <clears throat> Basically, this film is known for many things, but the highest on the list is the great practical transformation of man to werewolf. The man behind this transformation was Rick Baker, who did all the special effects. Now what's funny is originally Rick Baker started working on The Howling, because this film came out at the same time, 1981. So he left the production and Rob Botton actually finished it. So two great werewolf movies came out at the same time with great special effects, all kind of started by Rick Baker. And again, the inspiration for the werewolves and dog soldiers was most likely from the Howling. So all these films are actually connected by more ways than one. They're not just great films, but they inspire each other and were worked on by each other. But I think the greatest thing that we can learn from American Werewolf in London is to not go walking on the moors during a full moon. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go for a walk. Let me check, see if there's a full moon first. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go anyway. <laughs> what the hell was that? Spooky as shit on these moors. Why did I come out here again? On the moors, on a full moon night. No. 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 Oh.